I know exactly why you clicked on this video. Because you're nosy, just admit it. You always want to get up in other people's business to compare yourself to them. It's okay though, because us humans are just really curious creatures, so I completely understand. In this video, I'm going to reveal everything I currently invest in, then go through any changes I plan to make with how I'm going to invest for the rest of the year. I think transparency with how I invest is very important since I publicly talk about investing on my channel. You all have the right to know where my biases lie based on how I invest my money. One thing I'm not going to do is tell you exactly how much I have invested. I know, I know. You might be thinking to yourself, well, what the heck? Aren't all good YouTubers supposed to reveal exactly how much they have invested? Uh, no, they're not. And I think whoever made that rule is a complete idiot. Oh yeah, sure, let me tell you exactly how much money I have as a semi-public figure on the internet so I can paint an unnecessary target on my back. Great idea. I don't have a girlfriend right now, so I'm trying to avoid gold diggers and not attract them. I will tell you that I am not a multi-multi-millionaire like some other creators in this space. But at the end of the day, does it even matter how much I have invested? Would you believe what I'm saying or doing even more if I had $2 million versus $200,000? Well, you shouldn't. The more important thing that you should care about is why I invest this way, because that's going to be more revealing than anything else I tell you. So let's get into it. When it comes to stock market holdings, it's all about the traditional index funds, index funds, index funds, or index-based ETFs. Overall, I'm about 98% with US stock-based funds and 2% international stock-based funds. I'll explain the 2% in a minute, so hold on. The US-based funds are spread among S&P 500 index funds that are issued through Vanguard or some random companies that I've never heard of because those are the only good low-cost index fund options available within those 401k accounts. The rest of my US-based holdings are in the Vanguard Total US Index Fund, VTSAX, and VTI. If it were up to me, I would have all of my US-based holdings in something like a total US stock market fund, but since none of my 401ks have that option, I am happily sticking with the S&P 500 funds in those accounts. That is not a knock on any sort of S&P 500 index fund at all. But if you gave me a choice, then I like the total market fund because it has some exposure to some mid and small cap companies. While the allocation to those mid and small cap companies isn't that big, it's still something which is just enough to keep me invested from a behavioral perspective. When someone is like, hey Jared, why don't you invest in a mid or small cap stock fund? I'm like, well technically I already have exposure to those smaller companies through my total US stock index fund. I'm not confident enough that I'll be able to stick with a portfolio where I intentionally tilt a little bit more of it towards small cap companies through a specific fund, so that's why I haven't invested in one up until this point. In my opinion, your behavioral tendencies need to be taken into account when constructing your investment portfolio as opposed to just choosing funds that have the potential to maximize returns. That's a recipe for disaster that I've seen screw over so many people, especially when the stock market is down. Call me weird or call me crazy for not trying to maximize my returns by adding more US stock funds other than these two, but if I can't even stay invested during the down years, then I'm not even going to bother adding them to begin with. I'm perfectly fine with accepting average market returns because my main goal is to stay invested for as long as possible. And these two US-based index funds allow me to do that. With all that being said, don't overthink the whole S&P 500 index fund versus total US stock fund topic. In a perfect world, you'd pick one or the other to reduce portfolio overlap. But that's not always possible once you start taking into account all of your investment options among all of your different accounts. Just pick one and your returns will end up being close enough. If you really want my specific thoughts on these two types of funds, then I'll have a video where I break down the details, which will be linked up above my head and down in the description below. Before I get into the rest of my investments, please help support my dog Molly and this channel by hitting that thumbs up button, tapping that subscribe button and notification bell as well. When it comes to my international holdings, it is all in the Vanguard Total International ETF, VXUS, within my non 
401k accounts and a Vanguard Total International Institutional Index Fund within my 401k accounts where it's available. You might be laughing about the fact that I only have 2% in international, and that's good because you should be laughing at how small it is. I made a video about 12 months ago mentioning how I was finally ready to start allocating some money to international index funds, so that's why it's not higher yet. It took me hours of reading through a ton of papers in different finance journals and almost two years to feel comfortable adding international index funds. The reason it took me so long to finally bite the bullet is because I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to stay invested during the times that they're underperforming US stocks. Now that I'm confident with a more globally diversified portfolio, I plan to slowly work my way up to probably around 15% and hold there before deciding if I want to increase anymore. I'll link a video above my head and down in the description where I share my thoughts around why it makes sense to invest some money into international funds, even though they've been underperforming for quite a few years. Now onto the real estate. A couple of years ago, I threw a little bit of money into Fundrise, which is a crowdfunded real estate investment platform to test it out. It's worked out pretty well so far, and I like it more for hands-off real estate investing if you're not interested in buying physical property yourself. I'll have a link to check them out in the description below if you're interested. Prepare yourself to potentially be triggered for a second. Even though I own the home that I live in, <laughs> I don't consider my personal residence to be, wait for it, an investment. So I am not counting it here. Could it be? Possibly. Should I go on a rant about this? I wanna go on a rant about this. I shouldn't go on a rant about this right now. We'll talk about this in another video, but let me say this. The real estate agent or whoever else is telling you that your personal residence is automatically an investment is absolutely, positively, unequivocally not telling you the whole story. Let me be clear. Nothing I just said should be taken as me telling people not to become a homeowner. I love it and I hope that most people get the opportunity to become one if they want to and can afford it. I'll save the rest of what I have to say for another video. While I don't consider cash an investment, a lot of people might be curious as to whether or not I'm sitting on a bunch of money waiting to invest it. The simple answer is no. As a buy and hold index fund investor, I'm a firm believer in not trying to time the market in any way, shape or form. Because of that, when I have extra cash, I invest it as soon as possible, no matter what the market is doing that day, week or month. That way I can get back to doing way more productive things like, I don't know, scrub my toilets or clean out my gutters or shovel snow or feed the birds and squirrels in my backyard. Now we're on to where all of the biggest scams have happened over the past couple of years. No, I am not talking about those internet pictures that you can just copy and save to your phone. I'm talking about cryptocurrency. I have a very small amount of money in Bitcoin and nothing else because honestly, I don't really trust anything else. Now, why in the world do I even own Bitcoin? To be honest with you, I have no idea. I ate a bunch of mushrooms one night, freaked myself out about the future downfall of the world, bought some up and put it on a cold storage wallet. I'm just kidding about everything except the mushrooms. <laughs> but there are two reasons why I own just a little bit of Bitcoin. Number one, it is the only true decentralized cryptocurrency out there. The rest can be manipulated by greedy, power hungry humans. So I don't want anything to do with that. Even though it's technically an asset that could go up in price, I don't look at it as an investment. I look at it for what it actually is an alternative currency. And number two, it's what I like to call a behavioral investment. A behavioral investment for me is one that I do with a very small portion of my money just to keep myself from doing really dumb things with a larger portion of my money. It's a way for me to reduce the possibility of future regret as well. I've said this before in, I don't know, one of the other two videos that I've ever talked about Bitcoin on. When it comes to Bitcoin, I am cautiously optimistic. Now I could see a future where it's a true alternative currency, and I could also see a future where it's not. If Bitcoin ends up skyrocketing, then cool, I can reduce my regret just a little bit because I own some. If it doesn't, then who cares? Because the amount that I have is so small based on my overall net worth that it won't destroy my finances. Once again, it's a behavioral investment. To trick my stupid brain <laughs> into not doing really dumb things with more of my money. Now we need to talk about how I plan to invest for 2023. 
I'm comfortable with the amount of Bitcoin that I have, so I am not adding anything to that position. I'm also pretty set on investing in real estate in 2023 as well. When it comes to stock market investments as a long-term buy and hold investor for 40 plus more years, I plan on continuing to add to my two fund portfolio, no matter what happens to the world. I cannot stress this enough. The world could be burning down and I'll still be investing into my two fund portfolio no matter what. Every year, there are a handful of major financial events that happen things we can't even predict ahead of time. So in 2023, when any of those things happen and you're wondering, what is Jared doing with his investments? The answer is always and will always be that I am not doing anything differently. I don't care what's happening to the stock market. I don't care what's happening with individual businesses. I don't care what's happening with interest rates, unemployment, or what the Federal Reserve says or does. I don't care about what's happening in the housing market. I don't care what's happening in the car market. All I care about is generating enough income to consistently invest money into my two index funds, then spend the rest of my hours on things that I can actually control in my life. Was that clear and direct enough for you? Since my stock market investing method is based on a two fund portfolio, if you wanna learn more about it or the three fund portfolio as well, then check out that playlist to your left next. Help support my free content here on YouTube by hitting that thumbs up button and checking out the description down below for more resources to help you with personal finance, investing, and financial independence. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Done.